if you're a college player and you're a great college player, like Caitlin was. <laughs> and you thought this was going to be Paige. And instead, it's Caitlyn. The delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players. Gino, just say you're a UConn guy. The recent eye poke incident during the playoff game between the Indiana Fever and the Connecticut Sun continues to stir up conversations. Caitlin Clark was assaulted yesterday in her very first playoff game in the WNBA. New information is emerging that is leading many to reassess D. Joni Carrington's public image. Caitlin Clark was assaulted yesterday in her very first playoff game in the WNBA. This situation seems to extend beyond basketball. It's definitely upsetting. I don't think there's nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, hurtful, disrespectful, hateful comments and threats. During the first two minutes of the first round playoff game of the Connecticut Sun versus the Indiana Fever, Dijanae Carrington poked Caitlin Clark in the eye. Caitlin fell to the ground. She was holding her face. The refs did not call a foul. They didn't call a flagrant foul. The play continued. With some suggesting there are racial tensions at play. Recently, Carrington made some pointed remarks aimed at Fever fans, but it appeared she was really directing her comments towards supporters of Caitlin Clark. When players misbehave during a game, they shouldn't be surprised if fans respond negatively. There are so many great players. There's so many great teams. There are so many positive storylines that can be written and celebrated. And for me, that's why I became a fan of this league. Yet through it all, Clark somehow manages to stay composed. Because these people were my idols. I grew up wanting to be like them. So um, I think continuing to, to uplift and you know represent this league in a positive way is the best thing that we can do. Some might argue, if you're getting booed, maybe you brought it on yourself. Things took a turn when a video of the eye poke went viral, indicating it might have been intentional. But damn it, in the first two minutes of this game, this Dijonay Carrington stabbed Caitlin Clark with her fingernails right in the eye. The footage clearly shows Carrington poking Clark in the eye, resulting in Clark sustaining a black eye. We've seen the animus directed at Caitlin Clark all year. It reached a boiling point yesterday. This isn't their first clash this season. Earlier, Carrington had mocked Clark after a foul, behaving immaturely. The drama keeps escalating, with new videos surfacing that seem to show some players celebrating Clark's injury. Caitlin Clark uh, played a terrible game, shot 4 of 17 from the field. Uh, the Indiana Fever got curb stomped by the Connecticut Sun. Uh, I get it. I get it. she had a bad game. Connecticut Sun looked good. They looked experienced. They brought a level of intensity and physicality that the Fever weren't ready for. While I usually admire Marina Mabry, seeing that was disappointing. Although we can't know for sure what they were laughing about, it certainly looked like they were making light of a serious situation. If you want to avoid negative fan reactions, celebrating moments like this might not be the best idea. There was no foul call. There was no real discussion of it on the ESPN broadcast. The, there, ESPN wrote a story after the game that did not mention that the biggest star in the history of the WNBA, the first woman to ever be the biggest star in American sports, was assaulted two minutes into the game on a dirty play with one of these women with these long fake fingernails that stabbed her in the eye. A few weeks ago, Carrington called Fever fans the nastiest in the WNBA. When asked if she still felt that way before a playoff game, she simply replied no, showing she knows how to provoke discussion. Do you think that had any impact on the game? Do, do, do you think that your meal ticket should be stabbed in the eye intentionally? On the court, two minutes into the game, and there's no problem here? Recently, commentator Jason Whitlock suggested that Carrington should be suspended for game two, labeling her actions as assault. I agree. If the WNBA doesn't take action, perhaps Adam Silver and the NBA should step in. The NBA plays a crucial role in supporting the WNBA. Without it, the league could struggle to survive. It's not worthy of discussion. I read this ESPN story to Alyssa Thomas uh, had a triple-double, and so-and-so scored X number of points, and the Connecticut Sun knock off the fever. And I'm reading the story, I'm like, where's the mention 
of the, the fact that the Michael Jordan of the WNBA was assaulted has a black eye during the second half of the game because Dejanay Carrington stabbed her with her fingernails in the eye. Historically, they haven't turned a profit, and this season doesn't seem to be any different despite the excitement surrounding Caitlin Clark. The new TV deal hasn't even started yet, so they haven't seen any benefits from that. Caitlin Clark's trying to pass the ball in the first two minutes of the game, and this woman swats at the basketball and somehow decides to turn her hand down and her fingernails and jab him right into the eye of Caitlin Clark. Kathy Engelbert, the commissioner, seems unaware of the growing issues. Fans are even discussing boycotting due to how Caitlin Clark has been treated. No foul call. No refs stopping the game to go, is this a flagrant? None of that. Just everybody moved on. Your biggest star, your meal ticket, the reason why you have relevancy, just got stabbed and assaulted and nothing. Recently, Carrington has been posting inflammatory comments about Clark and white individuals for months. Al KCK highlighted these tweets. While Carrington criticized fans for being nasty, there's more complexity to her narrative. And Dijanae has a history with Caitlin Clark. Like many of these girls in the WNBA, but she's at the top of the list along with uh, Kennedy Carter in Chicago and Angel Reese. Those three. But here's earlier in the season, Dejanay Carrington mocking Caitlin Clark on, on the court, played a very physical game with her back, back then too. And, and look, does, does Caitlin Clark do some histronics, some flopping? And, and, and perhaps I'm giving them this out on what happened yesterday. David Hookstead reported that she retweeted a racially charged message mocking non-black individuals with statements like, imagine not being black. She also shared another tweet saying something along the lines of, how to get away with murder, be a white man in America. It's not a natural act. And I called it out yesterday in real time watching the game. Like, hey, that was on purpose. That was not an accident. But the struggles didn't stop there. Clark's entire game was thrown off balance. Those precise passes we expect from her turned into turnovers instead. That was on purpose. Is Caitlin Clark making too much of it? Is she exaggerating it, trying to get the call? You can think both things. You can think, hey, this is on purpose and it's a dirty play. But you could also think, is Caitlin Clark making too much of this? And then later in the game, when they mentioned like, hey, you can see the black eye on Caitlin Clark's face. I was like, oh, yeah, that was it, it, it was intentional and it did real damage. One meme she posted read, pray for your light skinned friends. We're turning white, followed by prayers accepted. This language is quite provocative from Carrington. Hey, man, your meal ticket is under constant attack. There's been dirty plays all season. And again, I've admitted it. Some of them have been exaggerated. It's just typical rough play with girls. But there are some that it's just been dirty. And Dijanae is one of these people that has a real problem with Caitlin Clark. Another tweet stated, I'm rooting for everybody black. Don't ask questions. So can we really say that what's happening with Caitlin Clark isn't racially motivated? Dijanae is going up for the ball. She misses. And then her hand bends down like this and goes straight into Caitlin's eye. It's also noteworthy that Nalissa Smith hasn't been performing well for her team. Whitlock mentioned they need someone tough on their roster and that Smith would fit that role. If only she weren't pursuing Carrington from another playoff team all realize where the credit needs to be given as far as the success of this WNBA season Caitlin Clark came in and made such an impact this raises eyebrows across the league in my experience in corporate environments conflicts of interest can easily arise if I were an owner or coach in this league I'd be concerned about whether players are focusing on their teams or personal relationships there are whispers suggesting Smith may have intentionally missed a screen during a game now we have to wonder if there's more beneath the surface 28 years the numbers were stellar Caitlin Clark drew a whole new fan base into it. And now the question is, because she has been eliminated, she and the Indiana Fever are eliminated after losing two games to the Connecticut Sun. What is the rest of the season going to look like? Are people still going to care 
That is the question on everybody's mind. With all these racially charged tweets and fans calling for Carrington's suspension for Game 2 of the playoffs, Kathy Engelbert remains disturbingly quiet. As commissioner, she should be aware of what's happening and not just assume all this attention is good for the league. This is the highest viewed season in the history of the league. It may seem beneficial now, but if fans tuning in to watch Caitlin Clark decide enough is enough and stop watching, it could backfire dramatically. Because when you look at the numbers with Caitlin Clark there, her first playoff game drawing 1.84 million viewers, ridiculous numbers. The highest rated playoff game since game two of the 2000 WNBA Finals. This wasn't even just an opening round game back in 2000. This was one of the finals games. So this clearly is showing how much of an impact Caitlin Clark is having. They don't want to see one of their biggest stars getting hurt. The professionalism of the WNBA is being called into question here. It seems they struggle to manage their players effectively and may hesitate to act out of fear of media backlash if they penalize a prominent black lesbian activist. While media criticism is unavoidable, it's vital to protect a player who significantly significantly boosts viewership and attendance. Otherwise, the league risks becoming irrelevant. There's anti-white rhetoric circulating as people mock an eye gouge after it happened while laughing and joking about it. This doesn't look good at all. What do you think about this situation? With all this new funding coming in and considering how much networks paid for WNBA coverage, eventually these networks will ask both commissioners if they realize that the WNBA only secured a $200 million deal because of one player. Player. Make no mistake, sorry Dijon I Carrington, Angel Reese, and Aja Wilson, nobody is tuning in for you specifically. It's all about Caitlin Clark. 1.2 million viewers versus 394,000. Get over it. The situation surrounding Dijon I Carrington and Caitlin Clark has sparked a lot of discussion. The level of criticism is unprecedented, especially considering Caitlin has already dealt with her share of scrutiny this season. The last time I recall such intensity was when Kennedy Carter had her controversial incident during a game. By now, everyone has seen the footage of what was labeled a foul, though many are calling it a non-foul. And I feel the angle used in that footage doesn't truly reflect what happened. The act of poking someone in the eye is serious. And DJ and I has made some statements about it that I find hard to believe. This story is currently trending in the WNBA. The game occurred just two days ago, and I have to mention that the viewership numbers were impressive. Larger than any WNBA finals since 1999. This highlights how much attention Caitlin Clark is drawing to the league. However, this also explains why some players are feeling frustrated. There seems to be a hint of pettiness involved. Additionally, it raises questions about race in this context. Now, turning to Dijanai Carrington's remarks, she's facing significant backlash, which seems justified. Meanwhile, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert has been notably absent from this conversation. It appears she's hesitant to speak out, likely due to concerns about backlash from certain activist groups if she supports Caitlin Clark. This is a tricky situation for the league. They need to handle it carefully because fans are starting to reconsider their support amidst all this drama. Let's look at what D. Jonai said. I don't even know why I would want to poke anyone in the eye. That's hard to swallow because she clearly made contact. She added, I didn't realize I hit her. I was just trying to play the ball. Honestly, I find that hard to accept. Everyone has seen the video by now. There was even a moment where Marina Mabry joked about it during the game, which felt dismissive. People aren't going to easily accept her excuse, claiming she didn't know she made contact. Really? It's tough to buy that when you see how relaxed she seemed afterward. Jason Whitlock has been vocal about this too. He made some strong points that got a laugh out of me. He suggested Dijon I might want to rethink her long nails because they don't help her case. It's difficult to believe her claim that she wasn't aware of what happened when she was involved in such an aggressive play. If she truly didn't know she hit Caitlyn, why keep mentioning it? It reminds me of someone denying wrongdoing while being caught in the act. Her response feels insincere given how everything unfolded on the court. It's clear that you meant to poke Caitlyn Clark in the eye? There was a noticeable delay after your failed attempt to block her shot before you made contact. Your actions seemed very deliberate. You turned away right after the incident and it came off as pretty malicious. Seriously, how can you say, I didn't know I hit her? That's just not true. This is getting intense. People are fed up with this behavior. Just look at the numbers. 1.8 million viewers tuned in for Caitlin Clark's playoff debut. And get this, that was on an NFL Sunday. I actually switched off the NFL to watch her play. It was 
was a big deal for me to turn away from seven hours of uninterrupted football. Once the game ended, I quickly flipped back to the NFL, and it made me think about how different things were back in the day. Was Caitlin even born then? Nope, she came along in 2002. Wild, right? Game 2 is likely to break 2 million viewers. That's an excellent point. Where's Whitlock? Oh, here it is. A quote about WNBA culture asking Caitlyn about her pronouns. It looks like a scene from Roots, with Dijonai Carrington looking fierce and Angel Reese peeking in. Jason Whitlock nailed it with his comment. Imagine Jamel Hill's reaction to this. It's hilarious. But let's be real. Being straight and white seems like a challenge in this context. The WNBA culture is heading towards some serious trouble. Someone asked, how are the refs dealing with this? Seriously? Are we talking about referees during playoffs? Come on! The refs have completely ignored their responsibilities. They've swallowed their whistles whole. They're so afraid to call a foul on a black lesbian that they're practically digesting their whistles. Don't even think about saying that out loud. We've got refs around who might take offense. I'm laughing, but it's a serious issue. What do you think? Wow. Whitlock really hit the nail on the head with that one. Everyone saw what happened to Caitlin Clark. All right, I'm signing off now. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's okay to be a hater in sports. Like, hating in sports is a part of the game. Like, I like when our fans are so engaged and so passionate that they just don't like the other team. But being racist, sexist, and violent with your words, come on now, what are we doing? The Atlanta Dream is a WNBA team with a bit of a controversial history. One of its co-owners has been criticized as possibly the least effective owner in sports. Group cannot be a representation of what the WNBA would want in their league. This is our league. This was built, like, I feel like as a women's basketball historian myself, I've been watching since I was five. I was here before the league started, as a lot of the fans on social media feel the same. Back in 2020, the franchise removed an owner due to her Republican views during a time when social activism was on the rise. That ain't a representation of us. Y'all not like us. They not like us, okay? So please don't confuse me saying motivated by hate by meaning hating on a team the way a normal, die-hard fan would. Although the team claims to have good attendance, they play in a small venue that can only accommodate 3,500 fans. Crowds tend to show up mainly when star player Caitlin Clark is playing. For instance, let me just give you some examples. A die-hard Falcons fan can hate the Saints, but they would be going a little bit too far if they created nude AI pictures of Saints players and then sent them to the Saints players' families. That's what Caitlin Stans have done to Angel Reese. Recently, the owner made some remarks about Clark's fans, accusing them of being racist and sexist. A diehard Tennessee Vols fan could have hated our Yukon Huskies, but they would have been going way too far if they sent death threats to the Yukon players. And that's what they've done. That's what Caitlin Stans have done. This comment is surprising, especially since Clark has been successful in drawing large audiences and viewership across different platforms. A diehard Celtics fan could hate the Lakers. And you know what? <laughs> if we being honest, that Celtics fan base has definitely gone too far with some of their racist remarks and their treatments of players. It's not okay. The host of the show can't believe that someone could own a sports team without any business savvy, especially when they make such controversial comments about a player who has really brought attention to the league. Come on now, that's not acceptable. I mean, honestly, imagine if one of the stands said the things that they were saying. What if they said it to your daughter, your wife, your cousin, your sister? Folks might be ready to fight, okay? So... Caitlin, unfortunately for her, this is a group that is attached to her, not her asking this group to follow. It seems that they found a home in this fan base, thinking that that's where it was. Recently, the owner of the Atlanta Dream made some eyebrow-raising statements, saying they want new fans who look and act a certain way. This wording suggests they might not be interested in white fans or families who support the WNBA, particularly those backing Caitlin Clark. But... Recently, some things have shown where Caitlyn recently liked a post by Taylor Swift and it was supporting VP Harris. And on that post, all she did was like it. And this Caitlyn stands group that I'm talking about, the stands have now split against Caitlyn.